Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell. If you saw the last video I did, I was talking about the problems I seem to be having with Verizon trying to get my, well, actually it was all really about my second line and all the issues I was having with that. And I closed that video by saying that they were coming on Monday and that it was all going to be solved. You know what? Life just don't work that way. <laughs> and my life didn't work that way. So let me give you the update. And by the way, this is now Wednesday night that I'm doing this. So it's going to go live on Thursday. So remember, this is a couple days. So Monday comes and nobody shows. Nobody shows up at all. No phone call, no email, no text message, nothing. I wait until about 2 o'clock. And I'm trying to find a number to call someone at, and I finally find a number, and I call, and I get someone. And I said, hey, the guy who was here on Thursday said he was coming back on Monday to hook up my phone and finish, you know, hooking up my internet access for my wife's computer, because her computer is another room. And they said, well, whoa, we don't show that. We show an order for Wednesday. And I said, well, he told me today. So I was expecting someone today. I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything about a Wednesday. So they go through some kind of stuff and whatever. They say, we're going to try to find him. It's his day off. They're going to try to track him down. I'm thinking, why are you tracking a guy down on his day off? What, you know, what's this all about? You know, he's not the one who schedules stuff. Uh, so anyway, it turns out kind of ugly. And, you know, I get someone else on the phone who says, well, you know, the thing is, we don't have to come out to do anything on your phone. All we have to do is turn it on. And this sounds like it's a, a trouble call. And if it's a trouble call, you know, some other thing, this is a maintenance call. We're going to have to charge you for it. And I say, well, for what? What are you going to charge me for? You guys haven't finished your work. Well, we think we have. I said, no, you haven't. You can't just turn it on. What makes you think you can do that? I'm still on a Time Warner phone. You guys are way off. You're not even close right now. So... Now I'm mad, and we get some other guy in on it, and we're talking this thing out, and I'm irked. This is the first time I've gotten mad. You know, in the last video, I said I had never gotten mad over this thing. Well, now I'm mad. Now some guy's trying to tell me i got to pay for something that hasn't been finished. So we get to a thing where they're going to send the tech the next day. Okay, at least we got something. So the guy shows up. Actually, he wasn't supposed to show up until, you know, 10 or 10.30 or whatever, he called early. I was awake. He showed up. Now he comes and looks. Now he's read this report of this other stuff. So he gets here. He sees the, the Verizon modem is in the master bedroom. He sees the Time Warner modem here in the office. He says, oh, okay, I get it. You know, this is why this guy did this thing. You know, he couldn't turn, put it in your office. Otherwise, he'd have to turn off the Time Warner phone. You wouldn't have had access to your, your business line. I get it. Beautiful. You get it. What are we going to do this today? So he says, well, unfortunately, I didn't get an order for another line. I said, what do you mean you didn't get an order for another line? Time Warner even called me on Monday and said that they had given up the line. So he gets on the phone with one of his managers back in the tech office. And this is the funny part. I hear the guy says my name, and this guy says, oh, that poor guy. We haven't taken care of him yet. So i become kind of a celeb cause or cause celeb, whatever you say. So, they go through all this stuff, and here's what happens. Well, now, we're still picking on Verizon. What happens is just because Time Warner has given up the number, and just because the number is available, does not mean that it's available. It's not available until the business office, a.k.a. billing office, writes it up. Until they write up an order, the number is not considered available. So, this guy can't do anything. Now, the guy he's talking to on the phone says, well, you know, I'm going to try to see if I can expedite it. Tell him I'm going to call him later today. Okay, fine. They're going to call me later on Tuesday. Never happened. Nobody called me on Tuesday. So, today is Wednesday. I'm a patient guy. I really am. So, it's Wednesday. No phone call. I wait until about 1.30. And then I decide, okay, it's time to escalate this again. So I call this lady Regina. Now, I've talked to Regina since after the first week of stuff. 
And she's the one who's going to be giving me a discount on the bill for all the trouble I'm going through. And I said, you know, Regina, I got to tell you the truth. For a communications company, y'all ain't communicating all that well with, e with each other. And she says, well, what's wrong? I said, I don't have my line. She says, well, they told me that they turned it on. I said, okay, understand this. They can turn on anything they want to. My second line is still connected to the Time Warner modem. The other modem is in, the, in my master bedroom attached to my TV. It ain't going to work. She says, oh, you're right. Got one. So she says, let me see what I can do. So she gets on the phone and does some stuff. And she calls me back and she says, we can get a tech out there. I'm not exactly sure when, but we can get a tech out there. Are you going to be available? Where am I going? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> sure, let's, let's, let's get this done. I got to get this stuff back to Time Warner. So it took about an hour and a half. But two guys show up. Now, the very first time it was two guys, and then it was one guy, one guy, one guy. This time it's two guys. And it turned out to be a good move that two guys came. Because they come in, they take a look at the setup, say, okay, yeah, we think we got this. They didn't got it. They didn't got it, at least initially. It took a while. They're looking all over. They can't figure out stuff. They go outside. They go to the basement. They're here looking at this thing here. I happen to mention, you know, by the way, I got an alarm system. You do? Where's the box for that? Oh, it's in the coat closet next to the front door. Now he sees something else. So he's looking in here and whatever, and he's walking around. He's looking, and then he looks up at the attic. He says, what's up there? I said, I don't know. I've never looked up there. My wife's been up there, but I've never looked. I don't like the attic. I don't like the basement. So I've never, I've never looked, never gone up. So he pulled the thing down, and the little guy, there's a big guy, a little bigger than me, and there's a guy who was a lot smaller than me. The little guy goes up there, and he's looking around. All of a sudden, he says, ah! And so they figure out that there's something up there called a junction box. I have no clue what this is, but the junction box seems to be the thing that basically runs all the lines uh, into the house. I mean, one of the weirdest things that they've done with this entire house is they wired stuff stupidly. So, uh, the files box is out in my garage. The phone box happens to be down in the basement. The alarm box is up here in the living room area, you know, outside the front door. But the junction box is up in the attic. So what happened is that they routed stuff from one area all the way through the house. They ran it through the alarm system because I guess the guy said that the alarm system has to go first. Once the alarm system is in, you have to run it through that first because it does all this protection if power goes out or, you know, nuclear bomb or whatever. I guess your alarm system still works. I just made up that last part. So they ran it here and then they ran it back all the way to the kitchen because my first line is actually set up in the kitchen and the second line is set up right outside the master bedroom. So after an hour and a half, these guys have figured that out. I now have my second line. They hooked up the ethernet cord. I go to my wife's computer. It's working fine. Everything is fine. Finally, I have Verizon out of my house for good. At least I hope so. So now you're thinking it's all done, right? Oh, great. You know what? I can go out to Time Warner. So I get all this equipment. I'm going to run out to Time Warner, turn it all in. So I get in there and I go up to the desk. Yep, I'm, I'm shutting down internet and uh, uh, what do I have? T TV and phone. But I'm keeping the alarm system. Keep an alarm system. Had that beforehand, keep an alarm system. So the guy sits there and he starts clicking all this stuff and he's taking a long time clicking stuff. I don't care. I figure, you know what, <sighs> finally over. We're getting over this. Then he gets to something he's not really sure. So he asked his buddy there, hey, how is this supposed to work with alarm system? I'm having trouble shutting it down. He says, oh, it's because you need to have the phone on. So I said, wait, why do we need the phone? He said, because the alarm system has to have a phone to run through. I said, yeah, but when my alarm system was installed back in 2000, we didn't have all this other package, so it was hooked up through the Verizon system. He said, that may be, but as times have changed, there's been this thing where we now hook it up to the phone because you had the TV, internet, phone package. It's now hooked up with that. 
I said, but no one came out to the house to do any rewiring. You know, he says, that's not it. He says, you don't have to do that. It just has to be associated with a phone. So I said, so in other words, I got to have another phone number? He says, yeah, you've ported your other number to these people, so you're going to have a phone number. I said, so what you're telling me is I'm going to have a phone number that I can't access in my house or any other place. And he says, well, yeah. I said, well, that's kind of stinks. I, I said, how much is that going to be? He says, $10 a month. I said, wait a minute. I said, on the Time Warner bill that came every month, it said the phone was $39.99. And the guy says, well, yeah, that's what we tell people, but there's people who sometimes fuss about it, so we will drop it just to $10. I said, what? He says, yeah, you could have had just the phone because you had the alarm system for only $10. So, how much am I paying Verizon for the second line? $9.99. Might as well just say $10. So, I could have just stayed with Time Warner phone for $10 plus my alarm system, forgot about moving a second line over to Verizon, which has held me up for three and a half weeks, and had a wash. Are you kidding? How would I know anything like that? Now, here's the other side of this. I don't know that this is necessarily true. This is just what this guy told me. He gave me a number to check tomorrow to call on the alarm system. He said, you can verify that. This is how we've done things as I've been told. But I don't know for sure that we're not expert at that. So here's a number. You can call these people tomorrow and verify that. Maybe we don't need our phone. And then that knocks it off. Because right now, as it stands, I'm going to be paying basically $10 for a second line to Verizon, and I'm going to be paying for line number three to Time Warner for a number that I don't even know because they didn't even give me a number tonight. <sighs> Nobody communicates stuff well at all. And this isn't anything I would have thought of. Why would I have thought that I need to research and find out that I need a phone line for my alarm system? Never needed it when we first put it in. We didn't change over to this other thing until at least seven or eight years. Why would I think I needed something else? <sighs> it's frustrating. And, by the way, if these folks had just done, and now I'm picking on Verizon again, if they had just put in the internet and the phone and what's the other thing? Well, geez, the internet. Oh, TV. If they had just done that the first Wednesday that they came out here three weeks ago, and I could have taken all that stuff back except for the phone and said, well, I don't want to turn the phone off yet. And if they had said to me, oh, well, since you have the alarm system, you need to keep the phone and, and you know, it's only $10, I'd have kept the phone with them and I'd have called Verizon and said, oh, scrap the order for the second line. And I'd have been at peace. There you go. So there's some lessons here. And you know what? I'm not going to do the lessons here. I'm going to talk about some lessons as I uh, integrate this into a topic that I'm going to be doing on my business blog. And I'm going to talk about customer service. I'm going to talk about procedures. And we'll see what else I talk about. But this is just me saying, you know what? This is not always an easy process. Now, I've had a lot of people who have said to me, oh, geez, we didn't have to go through any of that. <laughs> you know what? I guess this just shows that sometimes stuff happens, and weird stuff seems to happen to me. And that gives me something that I can talk about and put up a video on. So, there you are. If you have any questions whatsoever, if you have any comments, I hope that this kind of thing doesn't ever happen to anyone else. But, if it does... If you saw this video, you say, geez, look what that guy went through. Anyway, I'm Mitch Mitchell. Y'all take care. Have yourself a great day.